Thanks for checking out Billy the Kid Adventures. Today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Cleveland, Bomb City, USA, and the infamous Irishman, Danny Green. In the mid-70s, a mob war played out in Cleveland. Former longshoreman, union president, turned gangster, Danny Green took on Cleveland's mafia for control of the city's profitable criminal enterprises as seen in 2011's Kill the Irishman, Bomb Laden, Gangland Saga. Danny Green's bloody gangster war led to Cleveland gaining notoriety as Bomb City, USA from the many bombings that ensued. The Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms had to double their Cleveland staff in the 1970s to keep up with all the carnage. One of the most publicized events during the Cleveland Bomb City USA era was the 1975 bombing of Danny Green's home here on Waterloo. Now nothing more than a vacant lot with a commemorative mural. Here's what Danny's residence on Waterloo looked like after the bombing. And yes, he was inside when the place blew up. Kill the Irishman shows how Danny and his girlfriend cascade down from the second floor to the ground level after the explosion. And here's some actual Cleveland news footage of the place on Waterloo after the bombing. After the bombing, Danny amazingly walked away with minor injuries, adding to his growing legend at the time as being indestructible. The bombing of Danny Green's Waterloo house was retaliation for him being the prime suspect in the car bomb death of Cleveland racketeer Shondor Burns, who had served as Danny's Cleveland gangland mentor. A falling out between the pair over a bad financial deal led to Shondor, portrayed here in the movie by one of my favorite actors, Christopher Walken, putting a contract out on Danny. You give this to the man who kills the Irishman. Danny, in turn, had his own plans to deal with Shondor. Everyone in Cleveland knew Shonder was a regular at Christie's Lounge on Detroit Avenue, thus making the location a good place to target him. Right behind me is where the back parking lot behind Christie's Lounge for lives. The place where Shonder Burns was killed by a car bomb. The force of the blast was so great that his body parts literally flew all over the area, across the street to St. Malachy Church. Ironically, an Irish Catholic church at that. Let's take a look at St. Malachy. Shonder's bombing death happened on Holy Saturday, right as evening church services were taking place at St. Malachy's before Easter. Here's the movie's depiction of the bombing, followed by actual news footage noting early on how the police were trying to identify who the bomb victim was. Investigators have been here well over a half hour. What have they pieced together? Any idea who it is? As far as I can determine, it's a white male. The part that we've got uh, recovered is the upper torso. Oh, there's pieces all over the place. Uh, found a leg over against the fence. In the photos of the damage from the bomb is quite unbelievable, showing how powerful the blast actually was and the resulting carnage. The news of Shonder's bombing death added to Cleveland's growing reputation as Bomb City, USA. Though everyone in Cleveland suspected Danny Green as the culprit, he was never formally charged for the crime. As Cleveland was transforming into Bomb City during the 1970s, other random bombings were happening around the city, like that of the Thinker statue in front of the Cleveland Art Museum getting its legs blown off. Or the Roxy Burlesque Theater on East 9th Street in downtown Cleveland getting its lobby blown up. 
A surprising number of Cleveland businesses in the mid-70s resorted to bombings to settle their disputes. There was a fish store bombing, car rental bombing, caterers, even a barber shop got bombed. And being the gritty blue-collar town, labor union-related bombings in Cleveland were often in the news. And in 1976, as Cleveland celebrated our nation's bicentennial, a two-foot bomb was found at Edgewater Park, where our city's fireworks show was held. Finding the giant bomb was barely noteworthy, with a tiny mention in the back pages of our newspaper. A testimony to the Times with regards to the numerous, more high-profile bombings going on at the time. When Cleveland's top mafioso, John Scalish, died unexpectedly without naming a successor and was replaced by James Licavoli, who many considered less than ideal for the role, a mob war broke out for control of Cleveland's lucrative illegal operations. Teamster boss slash racketeer John Nardi formed a unique alliance with Danny Green and soon gangland warfare was booming in Cleveland with bombings often being the approach used to take care of business. At 1976 Feast of the Assumption in Cleveland's Little Italy, home base of Cleveland's Mafia, John Nardi and new mafioso underboss Leo Lips Masseri disagreed on how to divide the festival's gambling profits. This led to Nardi allegedly murdering Lips Masseri along with Danny Green's people taking care of some other Cleveland Mafia individuals, quickly escalating the gangland war. This led to mob contracts being put out to kill both Nardi and Danny Green. Behind me on East 22nd Street, on what's now the Cleveland State Campus, is the former location of the Teamsters building, where in the back parking lot, John Nardi, as he went to get into his car, was blown up as the vehicle next to him exploded with a car bomb. And here's some news footage of the bombing of Nardi's car, still on fire in May of 1977, as nearby news reporters arrived quickly on the scene. Nardi was still alive for some time on the ground, with both of his legs blown off, as the eyewitness notes. Both of his legs are blown off. That man will never walk no more long as he lives. With Nardi taken care of, the Cleveland Mafia now focused on eliminating Danny Green. A few months later, in October 1977, the mob caught up with the Irishman after having survived four prior assassination attempts. Today, known by many as the Danny Green Building, Brainerd Place office building in the Cleveland suburb of Lyndhurst was where Danny Green met his fateful ending. A wiretap on Danny's phone let Mafia hitman Ray Ferrito know Danny would have a dentist appointment in the building behind me. Ray was able to park the car next to Danny's while he was at the dentist that was packed with explosives and detonated the bomb via remote as Danny got into his car later ending Danny's life. The massive blast from the car parked next to Danny's was easily more than enough to kill him and his body was torn apart by the bombing. The death of the Irishman led to several retribution bombings and murders, but by the end of the 1970s, Cleveland's claim as Bomb City USA was over. The mobsters responsible for Danny Green's bombing were identified by a witness at the Brainerd Place parking lot, leading to their imprisonment and the eventual demise of the Cleveland Mafia. My Bomb City video is only a small part of Danny Green's remarkable life. I highly recommend checking out the Irishman movie, associated documentary, and biography to learn more. Thanks again for checking out Billy the Kid Adventures in my Cleveland Bomb City USA video. For more of my Cleveland themed videos, 
like the one about the deer hunter filming in Cleveland featuring Christopher Walken, who was in Kill the Irishman. The link is below. And if you want some lively Cleveland tales, take a look at my graphic novel, Hey You Punks, about growing up on Cleveland's gritty near west side back in the day. Link is below also.